strike up the band because we have an exciting edition of high school girls basketball coming your way. Tonight's matchup is a fun what if scenario. These two don't have to worry about playing each other in section or state, but trust us, it will be a good tune up for these two when they make their postseason bid. It's the Class 2A two-time defending state champion, Providence Academy Lions hosting the Maple Grove Crimson. Maple Grove number three in Class 4A, Providence Academy number one in Class 2A. Greetings everyone, I'm Mike Pete and he's Alex Nagel. We are along the wall here because we've got a big crowd on hand for this one. And Alex, we might see more history tonight. On Tuesday, Tori Orline became the fastest player ever to 3,000 points and the 25th player overall to do so. Madden Greenway 37 points away from becoming the 26th player to reach 3,000 points. But Alex, we've seen Providence over the years. Madden Greenway remains the unicorn that drives this team. Yeah, I tell you what, no doubt about it. And storylines galore with this particular game here to, tonight, Mike. I mean, what a dandy we have. We certainly have a dandy. Providence coming off a big win over Crosby Ironton on Tuesday. Madden Greenway had a triple-double in that game. Ari Peterson had a double-double, and she just got her first offer from Minnesota, her first D1 offer, that is. Alex, we've seen this team a couple of times. That starting five is loaded. Any one of them can have a big game, and that's why they are one of the most consistent foes in Class 2A. They sure, they sure are. You know, for me, Mike, you know, here's the big thing. We both saw these teams this last Saturday night wind up on the uh, wrong side of the ledger against very good opponents. And, you know, when you get into February, you, know, you have to start acclimating yourself to playing big games. And this is one of those classic big games against a quality opponent. And because of that, you have to adjust your attitude. You have to come in with a different mindset. And I really want to see how both of these teams respond to this particular challenge tonight. Maple Grove won to bring a challenge. Number three in Class 4A, they lead the Northwest Suburban Conference, and Jordan Odie, who verbally committed to Michigan State earlier this season, having a fantastic junior year. Four straight 20-point games, and Maple Grove picking up some wins against late conference foes. They have a lot going their way. They almost got a win against Hopkins. Maple Grove, they have been waiting to break out of the shell. A win against Providence Academy would go a long way in that direction. Well, I tell you, no doubt about it. It's been a little while since we've seen the Crimson on the big stage. But make no mistake about it, Mike, this team has the goods to get, not only get on the big stage, but do some damage as well. We can't wait to bring you what should be an electric battle. We'll be back with the starters. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Mike Beaton and Alex Nagel with you. And Alex, I've covered plenty of games here at Providence Academy. This might be the first time I have covered a game that is packed to capacity. You know, I'm glad I've never been out here before, Mike, and I'm uh, very thankful that you dragged me out here for this. Uh, this was uh, <laughs> I quite dragged a place. you out. You said yes to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. But I, this is a neat place, and, and uh, you can tell that the energy is high, and you know this should be a great one tonight. No question about it. I thought Tuesday's crowd was impressive. Crosby Ironton brought a sizable contingent down here. But Maple Grove, not too far away. Providence Academy, 
They've set the standard. I think a lot of folks know about Maple Grove and their success this season. I am flabbergasted, but amazed, like you said, it's really going to bring some energy. Of course, Providence already familiar with that. The double headers with Minnehaha Academy brought capacity crowds. Tonight will be no exception. You know, I, I think it just shows and it underscores the immense talent that the state of Minnesota has when it comes to girls high school basketball, Mike, and it's something that I think we can really appreciate. And a lot to appreciate with these two. Uh, Madden Greenway, second in the state in scoring, in the top 10 in steals and assists, picked up her third triple-double of the year against Crosby Ironton. She had one against Hortonville earlier this season, and for Maple Grove, they fielded some strong teams, but no state tournament appearances to show for it. Right. You know, the one thing I'm really interested to see tonight, particularly from a Providence Academy standpoint, is how they handle Maple Grove's length. You know, we saw that the Lions had a really difficult time with Minnetonka on Saturday night. That length factor really caught up with them, and it really led to their downfall. So let's see how they handle it, especially on the uh, comfy confines of their home floor here. Starting five for both sides, no changes. So for Maple Grove, it's Claire Stern, Kate Holmquist, Ava Cassette, Jordan Odie, the Michigan State Verbal Commit, and Isabella Hanna. For Providence Academy, you know the five by now. Brooke Honaker, Emma Millerberg, Ari Peterson, Hope Counts, and the unicorn, Madden Greenway, one of several. Well, this should be fun. What gave you that idea? I don't know. <laughs> just just a little hinch, hunch that I had, I guess. Just another reminder of how much women's basketball is appreciated across the state of Minnesota. Just a few years ago, I remember when Hopkins and Wyseta drew sellout crowds. This isn't the largest gym by capacity. Oh, my goodness. Greenway and Peterson collide with each other. Claire Stern will... Get an easy two out of that, Alex. That no. almost never happens. Yeah, that was a little miscommunication there, it looks like. And that is a bizarre way to start this game. But Providence, they've seen their share. Outlet, to Greenway to Peterson. Well, that's how you make up for the miscue. Well, I tell you what, Crimson was coming. They were coming with uh, some full court pressure there, and they broke it quite easily. Jordan Odie. Missed the drive, she is on the short list of top recruits on ESPNW, Madden Greenway missing the three. She struggled a bit from three point range over the last couple of games. Really struggled mightily against Minnetonka, shot 18%, fared much better on Tuesday. Three on the way, bullseye. I'll tell you what, no struggle there. Cosette, Cosette. burying that one. Cassette and Stern, both double-digit scores. Greenway used up the dribble, needs help. Finds Emma Milliburn. Brooke Honaker, the St. Thomas track commit. Over to Greenway. Hope Counts, the youngest of the Count sisters. That is a travel. Yeah. Came in a little late, but I well, I, suspected I thought we might get that call. Been called for a push. Not the worst case scenario for Hope, but from my vantage point, it looked like she dragged her feet yeah. just enough to warrant the travel call. Don't take that as a sign that I'm rooting against Providence Academy. <laughs> I just do my best to be a straight shooter. Hannah, driving kick. She'll fire the three. She won't connect. Hope counts. Lost the rebound. Ava Cassette with the swipe and the bucket. Solid start here for Cassette tonight. And with it, a 7-2 lead for the Crimson. Peterson steps back. That's for two. Picked up her first D1 offer earlier this week. Odie. Lost the ball. Hope counts. Lobs it to Madden Greenway looking for the step through, and she walked. Wow. <laughs> 
You won't see that happen very often. I didn't really see where the walk was, to be quite honest. And we're sitting amidst the Providence fans. Uh, you could. <laughs> I think I know how they feel about it. That was that was a tough one. We don't have video review capability, but that was a tough one. You're fine. You're fine. No, I'm used. I've done a lot of games in sellout crowds before. I'm used to it. As long as you don't curse on the air. So no George Carlin tributes if you can. <laughs> No, I, it's always fun to be amidst the fans and feel the pulse of this. Maple Grove. Remember, Alex, Maple Grove started the year with that big win over YZ. They beat Eden Prairie. So they have a couple of late conference wins on their resume. Hope counts, gets the pass, can't lay it in. So this Maple Grove team, they're not a fluke. They're not a pushover. They, oh, no. And that win over YZ looks a lot better now after YZ's win over Minnetonka last a night. Absolutely. Odie looking for the dribble drive. And she traveled. That was a little more obvious. <laughs> you know, the one thing that we saw this last Saturday night, Mike, was that Providence Academy had a difficult time getting into their trademark transition game. That's going to be very key for them tonight, I believe. Here's Greenway. Can't get the bounce. Madden still sorting out some three-point difficulties. Baseline drive and the finish for Ava Cassette. She's got seven, and Maple Grove up 9-2. As we said in the open, this is one of those fun what-ifs. Brooke Honaker missing the three. These two won't see each other in sections or state. Odie. Had it stripped away. Odie looking for the call, not getting it. I didn't see much of one. Hope count stayed straight up. I know she's run into some foul trouble. She plays volleyball, and uh, I understand sometimes that feeds her instinct to swing down, which you want to avoid in basketball, but that doesn't take away from her amazing skills as a player. Jump ball, Maple Grove with the arrow. Looks like Ari Peterson was over on the uh, bench uh, getting some attention, uh, band-aid or for a cut or something. Looks like a laceration. Oh, and it got on her jersey, so. Oh, I see, yeah. In those situations, I think trainers have that tied to go pen yep. or something similar to scrub it off. That is a safety precaution, so. Providence playing a little smaller right now. Madden Greenway tips it. Greenway got her hand on that, too. What a move Madden Greenway put on Cassette using the half-court line as a trap. You love watching Maddie Green Greenway play, Mike. She plays with such enthusiasm. You see that smile on her face. She's, she's got that engine running tonight. I don't think there's a time when that engine isn't running. Greenway still has yet to hit her first field goal. And this rings shades of the Minnetonka game last Saturday when she had a slow start. All right, Peterson back on the floor, times the pass, and will take it all the way. Well, let's see if that's the spark that the Lions need to Narrow the gap here. On the other end, rebound. And Providence gets the stop. Ari Peterson pulls up. That looks off. Rebound, Millerburn. She'll go to the line for two. Alert play there by Millerburn getting that offensive rebound. Emma Millerburn, the freshman, has been a part of this program since seventh grade. Averaging around 10 points per game. She and Ari Peterson, I feel, would get more publicity if Madden Greenway wasn't their teammate. Not that they're complaining about it. I talked with some of the Providence parents, actually with Ari. She doesn't have any siblings, but her teammates act like spiritual sisters. Emma Millerburn knocks down both free throws, and it's 9-6 in favor of Maple Grove. Standing Peterson room only. Peterson almost got another one. 
Odie. Trying to work her way through Milliburn. She'll go to the line for two. And Jordan Odie, our resident alto saxophone player, will head to the line. You know, you were with us, Alex, from Maple Grove Centennial. I'll never forget her remark. I'm not a band nerd, is what she said. I think she was not ashamed, but I think she was a little apprehensive about it. And it's like, no, have fun. Absolutely. I know of multi sport athletes like Matt and Greenway and the Count sisters, but how many basketball players do you know who also are in the band? Uh, that's, you know what? She's multi talented, and you know what? You should relish in that. I wish I could say the same. I was, I mean, I was a tennis player, and I was in band, so. I was not skilled enough for either. <laughs> it's amazing I've made it this far. That's okay. We forgive you. <laughs> Odie so, knocks down both free throws. Averaging over 20 a game. Greenway with the laser deflected. Honaker for three. Swish. Wow. Boy, you can't do it. You can't do it much better than that. That net hardly even moved. And much like the Crosby Ironson game, the more these other players can step up, Jordan Nodi with the turnaround, it rims out. Madden Greenway gets a lot of attention, but she's not alone. Fires the 15 footer. That looks short. And Madden wasn't aware of it. Yeah, I know. That was. Uh, she had her back turned. <laughs> She thought it was going gave, in. They gave up on that play too soon. That's a huge swing as Ava Cassette connects on the three. Madden had her back turn. She would have had a free ball. Honaker over to Madden Greenway. Fakes. Here she comes. Gets the finish. You had to figure at some point something was going to go down for her, and she finally got it. And because Madden is so quick and has that range, you have to respect it. Woo! Addie Hanna took a hit. Yeah, off of her foot. Well, maybe a little indecisiveness there on the part of Milliburn. But still, Mike, I think you have to feel that Providence Academy feels infinitely better about itself right now being back to in a single possession here after the slim start. Still a long way to go. Odie looking for the three. The step back move. Bullseye. Wow. And remember, Alex, in addition to Jordan Odie's accolades as a high school player, she plays on the same AAU team as Addie Mack. They've been backcourt mates for years. Yep. With Minnesota Fury. That's going to be a foul on Ava Cassette. And Ava, I think, is fuming a bit. I'm looking at her facial expressions, Alex, and she did not see it that way. That'll happen especially when you're going up against a seventh grader, but in any event. And Becca can hold her own. Becca oh, Greenway, that is. Absolutely she can. There's Madden. Looking for the, no! Got to hope counts, but the pass wasn't clean enough. Ari Peterson hits the three. You know, you don't necessarily think in terms of Ari Peterson being a three-point threat. But I tell you what, if she can keep developing that shot, look Greenway out. with the steal. Can she take it all the way? Not quite. Peterson with the reach. And one. Well, Ari Peterson, the eighth grader, suddenly stepping up, coming through big for the Providence Academy Lions. And a chance to level this game. Ari Peterson. I've said this before, Alex. She's becoming the glue player that Grace and Maria Counts were for this Providence Academy team. I think she has a little more length and agility. 
Of course, Marie and Grace are fine athletes themselves. They're playing at UMD now, but Ari giving this team a boost. Odie gets the roll. Odie so, with seven. She's so versatile. Madden Greenway, one on one. Spin move, draws the foul. You probably have heard this saying before, Alex. Speed kills. And you can't coach it. No, I mean, she. You can't coach against it either. She has that ability to really turn on the Jets when she wants to or when she has to. Madden Greenway led the state in scoring and assists last year, has led the state in goals as a soccer player, won two bronze medals in girls soccer, two gold medals and a silver in girls basketball. She hits both free throws. 19-18, 9.38 left in the first half. Alex, this is turning into a fun showcase. As we predicted, Shooting free throws will be Bella Hanna. Bella, Addie, and Jordan Odie. You may know this, Alex. They run their own basketball training business. They refer to as OHH. <laughs> Missed the front end. Missed both. Ari Peterson gets the rebound. Greenway oh. sees a hole. Ooh. That doesn't happen often. You know, it's still been a, a little bit of a struggle for her, which is surprising. Driving kick, three from the key. Ari Peterson can't get the rebound. It goes to Odie. We know she can do some damage. Hands it off. Three ball. Corner pocket. Kate Holmquist on the board. That's Hope Counts looking for the bank and it rims out. Couldn't get the friendly roll on that one. Maple Grove looking for a quick score potentially. That's Cassette. That's Stern, I should say. Another three, this one offline. Becca Greenway snags the ball. Goes to her big sister Madden. Oh boy. Transition chance for Maple Grove. Kate Holmquist with the finish. Timeout, Providence Academy. As Maple Grove leads by six, Alex, I know with Madden, when she runs into these shooting struggles as we've seen with Minnetonka, sometimes she might try to hurry things up, force the yeah, issue a and, bit. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's becoming uh, evident here this evening, Mike. And you know, the thing of it is, if you're a shooter, you've heard the old adage, I'm sure, if you're a shooter, you gotta keep shooting. And eventually they will fall, and they will. It's just a matter of when. But you saw Saturday night against Minnetonka that when they didn't fall, she got a little frustrated. So I'm sure there's that frustration element that's it's there as well for her right now. But it's all part of the learning curve. And again, yeah. this matchup won't have any implications. It will help prepare them, though, train them, guide them to a state tournament. And Maple Grove, we talked about the Maliks, 15 and three, had a close one with Hopkins, almost pulled it out, just couldn't quite get the finish. Their only bad loss, if you want to call it that, would be Prior Lake. But they have wins over Wyzetta, Eden Prairie. They get another big game on Wednesday at Andover. Remember the yeah. Northwest Suburban Conference, That's teams only meet each other once. So the conference championship will likely come down to that game. Yeah, that's gonna be a huge game. I well, believe that's at Andover. It is at Andover. I wouldn't mind having you with me, Alex, uh, but either way, it's going to be part of a really grueling week of games for Maple Grove as Providence throws it away. The Providence tonight, Andover on Wednesday. Next Friday, they go on the road to play Minnetonka. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a demanding uh, 
little bit of a schedule there. Well, I remember Mark Cooks saying folks might throw some shade at them because of section realignment. Now they're favored to get out of it, but I've said this before, Alex, look at their non-conference schedule. I don't think they are shy about a challenge. And Madden Greenway, when that perimeter shot isn't going, she's got that driving game in her back pocket. Well, you know, we just saw Madden, Maddie Greenway with a drive there. If you're gonna break out of a shooting slump, maybe that's one of the better ways to do it. But I'll tell you what. Maple Cold Grove. Bush sure is not suffering any uh, shooting slump here right now. Greenway a little off balance, got the roll anyway. Back to back buckets for Madden, five point game. This is Stern, the kick out. Holmquist thought about it, sees a lane, attacks. Can't get the bank. Ari Peterson with the rebound. Maple Grove knocking down their threes right now. Greenway, another open lane, didn't have the angle. Wants the foul. I don't know about that one. I didn't see a ton of contacts from up here. I, I, I didn't either. It looked clean, but... I guess it's different out there when you're a player, though. Yeah, sure. You're, you're going to advocate you're for yourself. You're always looking for that little yeah. edge. <laughs> you're going to advocate for yourself, no matter what. Odie to Stern. Pass mishandled. Hannah. Greenway got a piece of it, but a second chance comes up empty. 6-12 to go. Greenway fires. Well, with a five-point lead here, let's we'll see if Maple Grove can consolidate on their gains. So far, no such luck. Ari Peterson eating up rebounds the way Pac-Man eats pellets. Couple of quick threes, Alex, on the part of Providence. I can only imagine the atmosphere was this intense during the Minnehaha series. Three ball, that rims out. Sprint for the rebound, won by the Crimson. That's Bella Hanna, baseline drive. Holmquist, the three. Maddie Greenway rips the rebound tough, away. Tough play by Maddie Greenway with that rebound. She wants to go. Count it! One thing you have to love about Maddie Greenway is her grit and her determination. That was on display right there. And it almost seemingly almost impossible situation almost underneath the basket she gets a tough shot up and it goes in as she was making her way to the rim I was thinking to myself what are you doing against the devil <laughs> but shows how much I know now Madden is used to these pressure cooker situations far more than I am she knows how to conduct herself and she's up to 11 no three pointers for Madden but She's making it work from the inside. Odie, spin move, and the mid-range J. Jordan Odie with nine. Madden Greenway. Bounce pass to Hope. Counts! Oh, my goodness! I don't know what I like best, better, there, the finish or the assist. We'll give them both full credit. Maybe that'd be the best way to handle that. <laughs> Hope Counts, the youngest of the Count sisters, Grace and Maria, as we noted, playing at Minnesota Duluth. Their grandfather played in the NBA back in the 50s. And Hope getting some looks of her own, a few mid-major D1s. Actually, there is another coach giving her a look tonight from Nebraska Omaha, who played St. Thomas last night. Maple Grove wants the three. They won't get it, and Hope counts. Almost threw it away, but Shannon Healy is there for the recovery. Madden fires. Still looking for that three. That's a foul on Providence. They had plenty to give. 
Alex, I haven't seen a stretch of games where Madden has struggled this yeah, much I from three-point it's, range. It's, it is really strange to see. I, I think what's been maybe a little uh, surprising to me is that we really haven't seen that many fast break opportunities for Providence Academy in this contest so far anyway. Well, look who they're playing, Maple Grove. I think they have the speed, the athleticism right, to match, much right. like Minnetonka and Hopkins from earlier this season. Going across, nothing there for Cassette. Madden, spin move, left it short. Providence staying with it this time. Madden wants that shot. Foul on Millerburn, Alex. I feel like with Madden, there's a, maybe I think there's a little a too much hero ball frustration, and I feel like a little too much hero ball. Not that she is being selfish, because we know she is a terrific passer too. But it, it's almost like she's trying too hard. Yeah, that's you know, glide, glide. I guess that's what I'd be telling her. Well, there she is with the steal. And another three-point play chance. That is Madden, though, no matter what you might think of her game, she has that next play mentality. When you have a player that has that unique takeover ability like Maddie Greenway has, you know, when things aren't going your way, it's, it's easy to get frustrated. But the one thing that you have to appreciate is that even in those kinds of circumstances, she still finds a way to try and make a positive out of a negative, as she did there. Providence with their first lead. Shannon Healy takes the offensive rebound, and Alex, I'll get to that Madden Greenway, looking to penetrate inside again. This time it's a walk. That last foul is the third on Ava Cassette. So Maple Grove has one of their key pieces in early foul trouble. Thirty twenty nine. Odie steps into the three and oh. buries it. Odie with twelve, and Maple Grove retakes the lead. Honaker, the skip, hope counts with the post up. Now I like that possession by Providence Academy. They didn't settle for the three point play. They went for something down low, and it worked for them. Hope can be a bruiser down low. Odie, another three. Bullseye. I tell you what, when Jordan Odie starts getting into the zone, look out. Jordan Odie with 15. Providence Academy says right back at you. And that goes likewise for number 30. That's why, even if Madden Greenway might blunder from time to time, you're going to keep her in there. Yeah. It's one thing to make a mistake, Alex. It's another not to get rattled by it. And Madden Greenway has that toughness to persevere. Other players might get a little rattled, a little annoyed. Madden just keeps on trucking. Maple Grove. Another three. It's Kate Holmquist this time. Alex, Maple Grove, knocking down threes and taking names. Oh, my. Well, Madden, she's feeling that driving game. She's not going to back away from it now. I tell you what, Holmquist just might be the X factor for this Maple Grove team. Mike. Wide open baseline for Claire Stern. She'll go to line. Claire Stern, in our last visit with Maple Grove, we found out is quite the accomplished ladder ball player. Yes. She explained how that game works. I don't remember all the rules, so uh, go back to that post-game interview I had if you want to find out, or maybe hit up Claire. First free throw rattles out. Claire Stern averaging 14 and a half per game. And Claire Stern, one of several mid-major college commits for Maple Grove. 
That game with Andover is going to have a lot of college commitments, and we have a foul here. It's on Addie Hanna, and because Maple Grove is in the penalty, it's free throw time. And that's a third on Addie Hanna. Yeah, and Mark Cook's going to have to make a decision here. So your key bench player's got three. Cassette has three. And this is takes... not what Mark Cook had in mind. Yeah, no, it, uh, it sure isn't, especially at this stage. Greenway knocks down the front end. No three-pointers for Madden, but she's doing just about everything else well. Alex, I'd say in this first half, both sides have some things they could work on. With Maple Grove, you've got two big names in foul trouble. That will go to Maple Grove. Well, there, Maddie Greenway did not give up on the play. I, that, and for Providence, I feel like Madden could settle down a bit. And I say that maybe it's a little bit of nitpicking because we've seen her time after time get three-point play chances. But right. just don't try to force it. Glide. Let it glide. Ooh. That did everything but go in for Claire Stern. This has a state tournament field and the strategy involved here. What the? Oh. Well, shut my mouth, don't, Brooke Honaker from Don't forget deep. about Brooke Honaker. Remember, she can hit big buckets in key moments. She had a big game on Tuesday to help Providence pull away. Jordan Odie with the answer, oh. you bet. Daggers abound in this game, Mike. Jordan Odie and Fuego. Madden Greenway gets it to go. Alex, we're getting quite the superstar matchup, aren't we? That we are. Odie knocking down threes, wants another one. Bullseye! This time off the glass. Good gracious. Jordan Odie is playing out of this universe. Madden Greenway, not far behind if you can say that. No, she's been playing splendidly too. Hope counts, sees a lane, goes for the move, doesn't work out. Maple Grove, will they push, will they hold? They're gonna go, Stern for three. Providence has 10 seconds, Madden Greenway. You know, she'll try to make something happen in this moment. Got tripped up. That's good if it goes. 45-41 at the half, Alex Jordan Odie, 21 points. Goodness. Madden Greenway, 19, and we still have 18 more minutes of this. I know, it's been, uh been quite a display on both sides. We have, again, you know, we've seen some of the struggles that affected Providence Academy this last Saturday night, and Maddie Greenway still struggling from behind the yard. I can't believe that's going to last forever, but all in all, we only have a four-point game here, Mike, and, you know, it's like, as you said, still 18 minutes to go. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. We'll find out what happens when we return. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Maple Grove leads Providence 45-41. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James, she's in trouble. Finds James, toss shot, it goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Mike Beaton and Alex Nagel with you as we have an electric, energetic edition of high school girls basketball. Maple Grove leads Providence Academy 45-41. The first half numbers go something like this. Jordan Odie, 21 points, five three-pointers. Kate Holmquist with 11, Ava Cassette with 10, but she does have three fouls. For Providence, 
Madden Greenway, 19 points, 18 away from 3,000. Ari Peterson with nine, Brooke Honecker with six. Alex, I don't know what the second half will bring, but just about anything is possible. Well, I tell you what, we saw the Crimson really light it up from downtown in that first half, whether they can continue on that frenetic and hot pace remains to be seen, but I tell you what, you, you have to think at some point, Maddie Greenway is gonna break out of her slump and make a difference here in the second half. If 19 points is a slump. <laughs> that's one way of doing it right there. You call 19 points a slump? Well, I don't now think 21. <laughs> uh, now, yes, her three-pointers haven't gone down. Maple Grove, they've been feeling it, but that three will not drop, and it went over the backboard. Dead ball rebound. To Providence Academy. It hasn't been her best game, but Madden has found ways to make plays, and that is the important thing. Whoa. Kept the dribble alive. I thought that was going to be disaster for a moment. But Madden and her composure, well, Providence Hunter threw it was away. Trying to thread the needle there. Got the poke, so no transition play for Maple Grove. Came up with a nice knock, knocking that ball out of bounds to make up for that mistake. Maple Grove playing all the top late conference teams in Providence Academy. Jordan Odie, look out. Rebound secured, then taken away by Hope Counts. Madden still looking for that first three-pointer, and that's going to be a foul on Millerburn going over the back. And to be sure, Madden isn't doing anything wrong with her three-pointers. They're just vexing as heck when they're not going in. Yeah, I know. That's... That's what's so odd. And this has happened over a series of games. It hasn't just been a one-off. A little strange, but Jordan Odie shaking off hope counts, and that three is short. Well, Jordan Odie uh, proving that she is human after all. I don't know what happened to counts or if she just slipped or what. Alex Maple Grove now having some trouble with their threes. Milliburn on the take, too strong. Both teams struggling out of the gate here in the second half. Carrying, Bella Hanna turns it over. Again with the foul tally, Ava Cassette has three, Addie Hanna has three, Providence, no one in any serious foul trouble. Well, Emma Milliburn picked up her third, I stand corrected, but she's the only one. Everyone else in pretty good shape here. Greenway, blocked by Odie. Odie got that, got a hand on that. Drive and kick, three ball, short. Milliburn uh -oh. flung it too hard. And things kind of going a bit awry for both teams here in the early moments of the second half. C considering the caliber, the technicality, how strong these two teams are. You wonder if it does affect the psyche a little bit. Because they both can make plays, they both can disrupt, distract. Cassette on the move. Stern flips it in. You know, one concern I think for Condor Gates, especially in the second half, is that they've got to limit those second and third chances that Maple Grove had on that last possession. Honecker missed the three. Greenway going for the poke, takes it away, and lays just, it in. You know, it's just finding ways. It's just finding ways. Maddie Greenway is just so good at that. Madden thrives in these big time environments. Traveling call. Alex and I were on hand to see Madden come up with the game-winning play against Dowling Catholic last year against Hopkins. She went for 40, hit 16 of 16 from the free throw line. Madden not afraid of these big time environments. That was an errant pass. 
Hope Count's not in position. I think the Providence fans feel differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do a replay because we're recording. Now the Lions showing some full court pressure. Timeout just before the 10 second call. Connell Gets is pointing to the clock. Wise uh, decision there by Mark Cook. Saw his team in some danger there. 47 45, the two point game. And Alex, this is like the Hopkins game last year. You've got two teams that are at the top of their game, and you see how much it can influence both sides of the ball. These are two teams I think we're going to be hearing a lot about in the state tournament. Oh, I think that goes without saying. You know, both of these, as I said, you know, we were talking about at the top, you know, both of these teams have their sights set on the big stage come March, and both have the goods to do what they want to do once they get on that stage. Providence, they've been on the big stage before. In fact, they were been on the big stage a lot in their history. They won the 2A title in 2012 with Ray Finley, his daughter uh, Kelly yep. now coaching at Florida. They've been champions the last two years in Class 2A, so this is nothing new for them. It's like the old phrase, act like you belong, not unlike the Chiefs, right? Yep. who are back yep. in their fourth Super Bowl. I know the Rams uh, won't be there this year, but now, you hopefully, still have your Super Bowl. Hope, hopefully we can get back there again sometime. It is nice to have that Lombardi trophy at home in SoFi in Southern California. Well, speaking of rematches, we talked about Providence Minnehaha maybe facing each other, or Albany, we've got Chiefs 49ers rematch. Should be a lot of fun in about a week. A lot of fun here, too. No points, no seating on the line. Honaker with the steal, connects with Greenway. Another layup. 25 for Madden Greenway. We're tied at 47. Uh -oh. Steal. It's Ari Peterson. She's got Madden Greenway if she wants. No, she'll go for the oh. Euro step. Wow. What a play by Ari Peterson. Providence retakes the lead. I don't want this game to end. Cassette runs into Greenway. Can't get the bounce on the baseline jumper. Madden. For three. We'll Dead ball rebound Lions. to Providence. You take away the three-point line, Madden would be having herself a game. No, I know. <laughs> it would be like the old days of the NBA in college hoops. But you know what? Next play. We've said that before, and I think that's why Madden is still having herself a game, even if the threes aren't going in. Hope counts. Post up, not there. You know, I'm not sure what... Providence Academy head coach Connor Gates told his team during that last time out, but they're definitely more aggressive on the defensive end. If I may give a plug, the team bus driver is sitting next to us, and I think I can feel the poles rise and lower with every possession. <laughs> He's plenty of enthusiasm. Well, you're not alone. We've got a lot of it here. <laughs> we even have a cheer for one of the... Staffers who is wiping up a wet spot. <laughs> Everyone is bringing the enthusiasm to this game. Great crowd on hand here tonight. Great crowd. They're, they're enjoying it as much as we are, I can tell you. Wow. We'll try again. Well, Madden is a soccer player, so she knows how to get her kicks. I'll show myself out. Thirteen thirty left in the second half. Forty-nine forty-seven. Providence. Ooh, that was close. Odie. 
the lob. Three ball. That goes off the backboard. Matt and Greenway. Dumps it to Honaker. Now we see Providence getting that transition game going a bit more here, and it's paying off for them. Blair Stern responds with the mid-range jumper. Remember, Madden Greenway led the state in assists last year. She's in the top five this year. And even though she has yet to make a three-pointer, Hope counts with the post up. Madden got the rebound. Finally gets a three to go. Wow. Alex, what did you say? Keep shooting? Something along those lines. Odie, and one. I tell you what, you know, she's gonna keep doing what she does. That is her first basket of the second half. Odie not getting as many touches so far, but we still have 12.21 to go. It's been kind of a fast moving second half, hasn't it? It's still a tight one. Up until that Odie bucket, that was the largest lead Providence Academy has had, and Maple Grove, their largest lead has been seven. Here come the fans bringing the noise. Odie not phased in the slightest. Odie with 24, Madden Greenway with 28. She's nine away from 3,000. Looking to add two more, cannot there. Stern got fouled. You saw early on in that first half, both Cassette and Holmquist doing damage from behind the arc. That hasn't happened here in the second half. No, but Maple Grove still in this. They're not out of this by any means. Stern underneath, oh, count it. What a tough play by Claire Stern. And Peterson picks up her third. Gets the game leveled, and now the you Crimson have a chance to poke their nose back out in front again. You mentioned Holmquist having a tough time. Stern is picking up the slack right now in the second half. And she is now the fourth starter to reach double digits, Alex, for Maple Grove. Four of the five have ten or more. Madden. Oh. Holy roller, Batman. You know, Greenway thought about it out there, thought about launching that, then thought better. But you saw how Maple Grove has to respect that. Even though she yep, only has one exactly. three-pointer, you know exactly. she can make them. But we know Jordan Odie can make buckets too. Well, this is what, in this kind of a game, this is what you see what happened. The best players starting to take over. Blocking foul. Greenway went down kind of hard. Looks like she's okay. Madden, she, she has taken a lot of hits over the years. Addie Hanna picking up her fourth foul. Again, she is your first bench player. So that is going to really change the complexion of this second half. Especially with 11-18 left. Mark Cook having a discussion with Addie. Maybe he might be rolling the dice here and willing to leave her in. We'll see. Madden Greenway second in the state in scoring. Became the third player ever to score 60 in a game last year. Joining a growing list of players with 1,000 points or more in a season. Timeout. Providence calling it. Madden Greenway, five away from 3,000. Alex, what a week this would be. On Tuesday, Tori Orline became the fastest player ever and the 25th in state history to reach 3,000. Madden closing in on being the 26th. When the high school season is over, TSB Television goes on the highlight trail. Our highlight reels provide you with a valuable resource for recruiters and a keepsake of your favorite athlete. 
To learn more about our Highlight Reel services, contact us at tsptelevision at gmail.com. I did see Madden's mother, Jenny, look around, and so I gave her the signal five. She needed 37. She's only five away. I wasn't sure if 37 would be manageable against Maple Grove, but what do I know? There are a lot of things. Jump ball, Providence with the arrow. We've really seen the intensity ratchet up here for Providence Academy on the defensive end. It is paying dividends for them. And Providence, no strangers to high scoring affairs. It's been this way ever since Connor Getz joined the team. Yeah. A far cry from what we saw 10, 11, 12 years ago. Greenway, oh. a tough drive. She could hit 3,000 with a three. And now <laughs> you thought the tension was up there before Alex. Let's see what Madden does here. Goes for the pass. Emma Millerburn scores. Madden has such amazing vision, Alex. Yep. We That's, know she can score, but that, not that, afraid that, to play that facilitator. Is, that is great court vision on that last possession, for sure. Could have gone for it, but saw an open Millerburn. We've seen her pick up a couple assists that way. Baseline cut, extra pass, mid-range J, swish. I tell you what, you talk about that, that extra pass, that paid dividends there for, for Maple Grove. Lexi Hanna's on the board. Alex, you thought the tension was high before. Madden Greenway had it stripped away. It's really gonna go up to 11 now. Honaker what a, what a swipes it back. By Brooke Honaker. Greenway for 3,000. No. And the Maple Grove fans, oh, I don't know if you want to do that. And that's not to say I'm rooting for Providence over Maple Grove, but when you try to get Madden's head like that, I go back to the Stewartville game that I called for NSBN. They tried to taunt Madden with the air ball. She hit a silencer to beat the first in, half in, buzzer. In, in an odd kind of way, this feels like a state tournament game of some sorts, doesn't it, Mike? Absolutely. Greenway, we'll try again. Got it. Got it! 3,000 points! Wow. Madden Greenway gives Providence Academy their largest lead of the game. And a, now what, is what the, tw the 26th player in state history to score 3,000 points. Alex, for the sake of context, when I began my broadcast career back in 2006, there were only five on that list. That was Matt Greenway, 3,000 points. It's fun to be able to witness this. It's just so fun to be able to watch her play and just enjoy how great she really is. On Tuesday, it was Tori Orline getting 3,000, but Providence won the day. Providence, they get to celebrate the 3,000 point milestone, but we still have 914 left in this one. And it's only Nobody's six, won it yet. And it's only a six point game, so you still got to keep that intensity level up. Nobody's won this yet, and remember, neither team is led by more than seven. Hope counts. I tell you what, Hope the rejection. counts is really stepping it up on the defensive end of this second half for I'll, Providence Academy. She's done an outstanding job. Hope counts with five points. I'll never forget what she said or what a broadcaster said last year. And there she is Another again. block. It will stay with Maple Grove. So last year against Watertown Mayor, Hope counts had a big blocking game or got a big block and their announcer said oh god how demoralizing <laughs> hope counts she had seven blocks against minnetonka i think that got lost in the shuffle of that game but hope counts has come up with some big performances on defense who's that foul on i think it's on miller burned 
That's her fourth. That's her fourth. So Addie Hanna has four. Emma Millerburn has four. Alex, uh, that's only going to add to the drama of this finish. Jordan Odie, three ball, corner oh, pocket. Okay, what? She's going to add to this whole drama too, Mike. Madden Greenway with the answer, not that time. Three point game. Maple Grove can't get one from the right side. Odie closing in on what would be her second 30-point game of the season, by the way. Ari Peterson wants the triple. It goes off the back iron. These two teams are leaving nothing behind. Foul. Wow. Free throws coming for Cassette. I think, I think it was more body contact than anything. Still, the Crimson now with a chance to narrow the gap to just a scant point. With a ton of time remaining. Just the second foul on Hope Counts. Cassette has not scored in the second half. And you think about all the Maple Grove teams over the years that fielded a lot of talent like this group, but yeah. just couldn't make it to state. They last made the big dance in 2020. Or 21, I should say. Well, we saw the last couple of years Crimson falling short against Roseville in the Section 5 final. One point game, backdoor play, Peterson to shoot two. And Ari Peterson, again getting a lot of publicity for that first offer, perhaps the first of many. Bring me the news, did a write up and referenced the fact that she is the daughter of Adrian Peterson. And again, understandable with pro sports, but Talking to the Providence personnel, the parents, the players. She's just Ari. They don't worry about who their parents are. They focus on making a name for themselves. Ari Peterson splits at the line. It's a two-point two game, 66-64. Playing a lot of 4A teams this year. Edina, Buffalo, Hopkins, Minnetonka. Three on the way. Short. Ari Peterson corrals the ball. Madden Greenway thought about it. Uh -oh. oh, counts almost lost it. Jump ball. She mishandled the dribble. Hope oh, counts. Looks like she got her nose bandaged up. She's taken a few hits up there this year. Grace and Maria were strong facilitators during their time at Providence. Maria actually led the team in assists the first time they won state two years ago. Hope not quite as strong of a passer, but she's a strong blocker. <laughs> Hope hadn't... <laughs> that was kind of odd. Well, she and Madden having a laugh about it. Hope hadn't reestablished herself, or did she? Hope is okay. saying it's Providence ball. They are. Yes. So how this works. Mark Mark Cook wants how to this have an, works. Mark Cook wants an explanation. Well, how this works. Hope got back in bounds. If you reestablish yourself before you touch the ball, you can get it and not get the call. I think that is what the officials are yeah. discussing was Hope Counts back in the playing field right. before she touched the ball. You can go out of bounds and touch it uh, and touch it if you get back in bounds. It's not like the NFL where if you run out of bounds right. you can't be the first to touch it. That's that's <laughs> uh... now this is fun waiting music. Usually you hear the Jeopardy theme. It's it. We got a little like, chicken I dance. I like this song. This is good. <laughs> it's the chicken dance. We, we had it all tonight. 66-64. I don't know what else you can throw into this atmosphere, Alex. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is a game. Well, you wouldn't get this at the state tournament. They're not as whimsical. But still, we have seen just about everything tonight. So the question is, did Hope Counts get back in the field of play before touching the ball? 
And now they're giving it back to Maple not. Grove. And Kyra Gase wants an explanation. And depending on who you're rooting for, uh, that, you can gauge how the reactions are going. <laughs> that is uh, one of the oddest turn of <laughs> sequence of events I've seen in, uh, in quite a while, Mike. <laughs> well, I can't give you a replay, but again, if you're a Maple Grove fan, that's a good call. If you're a Providence fan, maybe not so much, but... A free timeout of sorts, adding to the drama, the emotions. The ever-increasing anticipation. Odie hands it off, Hannah to Holmquist, five to shoot. Hannah launches, bullseye. Ooh. Bella Hannah's on the board. Becca Greenway on the floor now. Madden, we know. Prime for these moments, draws the blocking foul. That's only the third foul on Maple Grove, believe it or not. Providence out of fouls to give, but Madden Greenway is going to the line for two. You know, when you get into a close game like this, Mike, the charity stripe becomes so critically important. You got to cash in. Madden the, makes the back, back end. The level this thing. Now has 3,001 career points. Toy Arline slightly ahead of her still, but we'll see what happens over the course of the season. Jordan Odie from the free throw line. Those fadeaways, never an easy shot to make. Hope counts to Madden Greenway. What will she do? Becca Greenway, her three, comes up short. Whoa, Hope counts. Sneaking up from behind. Madden banks oh. it in. I tell you what, time and time in this second half, we've seen Hope Counts really step up on the defensive end, and she just did it again on that last play. Madden Greenway now with her seventh 40-point game this season. Foul. It's on Ari Peterson. That's her fourth, and I don't know if you, I don't know if you chance taking her out here. Let her turn to the line to shoot two. Connor Gates may be rolling the dice here a little bit, keeping her in. Looks like he's ready to make a change. Well, Millerburn's going to go back in. She has four fouls, I think. Connor Getz is going to take his chances. Well, now. Claire Stern with 12. We're tied at 69. A nice, highly anticipated finish is awaiting us. I don't know what it's going to come down to, but you've got two marquee players at four fouls for Providence. And for Maple Grove, they still have three fouls to give. But it's been back and forth all game long, Alex. Neither team has led by more than seven. I expect another swing or two. Neither team can get on that killer run. You know, it, it's like you pointed out, I, that foul factor you know, with, we've seen uh, Ari Peterson now with her collecting her fourth foul of the night. You know, and the fact that Connor Gates has decided to roll the dice and leave her in there here at the 534 mark of the second half. Could be a little dangerous, but she's a smart player. Let's see how she handles the situation. And remember, for Maple Grove, Ava Cassette has three fouls. Addie Hanna has four, so 
it's not exactly smooth sailing for the Crimson. 2-1-2 from Maple Grove. Peterson pulls up and drains the runner. Ari Peterson up to 14. Maple Grove deflected by Peterson. Ava Cassette looked like she was going to straddle the baseline for the kickout. That's Addie Hanna. She's got four fouls. Three on the way. It's there. Well, you know, at some point, Cassette was going to find that touch again. Ava Cassette with 15. Greenway. Huge sea of white in the paint. Hope counts. Back and forth we go. Of the second half, and yes, 73-72. Neither side is backing down. Stern can't get the bounce. Ari Peterson had to lay off. And in Greenway, attacks. Oh my goodness. Drains the reverse. The capacity crowd getting their money's worth tonight. Odie for three. Hope counts, can't save it. I Alexis thought, I Hanna. Sworn that ball went out of bounds. Lexi Hanna gets the freebie. Madden Greenway got her own miss. Providence Academy will call a timeout. We're still knotted up, 75-74. 3.49 to go. And the student section filling in after the band departed. Oh, they are loving this. Madden Greenway with 42 points. Her seventh 40-point game of the season. Alex, I think this is going to go down as an instant classic. It certainly has the looks of it doing that for sure, Mike. For Providence Academy, this game, I think, couldn't come at a better time for them because looking at the remaining schedule, they have St. Clair next Friday. That should be a winnable game for them. Alexandria next Saturday, that's going to be a tough one. That's on the road. Our bus driver is going to pick up a few miles on that day. Holy Family Blake, Holy Angels. So Alexandria, I think, the last team that could pose a serious threat. Holy Angels has hung around a couple of times. But Providence, this has been their mantra over the course of several years. They schedule hard. And that's what makes them so tough Come when March rolls around. Some of the parents have joked about all the white knuckle games they found themselves in. But you're going to learn a lot about yourself playing a Maple Grove and a Minnetonka. Uh-oh. Ball is lost. Hannah. Greenway trying to pry it away. Cannot. Here we go, three. Miller-Burn gets the rebound. One point game. Miller-Burn looking to take it all the way, cannot. Rebound secured by Greenway. Shot clock resets to 20, Honaker left alone. That's dangerous. Buries it. That's dangerous. Odie, block, but no, a foul. Wow. Tough call. They call it on Honaker, so oh, they call it on Honaker. the block was clean, but Honaker must have made contact. Yeah, must have. I, and that I, I didn't see a whole lot of it, but Jordan Odie at the line, and now she has, I don't believe this, Alex, just her second 30-point game of the season. The scoring and playmaking extraordinaire that she is. She's got a season high. 31. And it's a two-point game. 
Less than three to go. Madden Greenway. I don't know if that's a shot you want. That early in a possession. Maple Grove has to burn a timeout. Alex, these teams aren't stepping away from what got them here. They are going to stick to their guns, whatever the result. Yeah, I think so. Mic'd Up Sports is TSB Television's talk show series. Available on all major podcast platforms, we offer sports figures, past and present, a place to convey stories and adventures on a deeper level than our traditional game coverage. Whether you're a superstar athlete or someone who works behind the scenes, we'd be honored to share your story. If you'd like to be a guest, contact us at The Mike Peden on all major social platforms. But I am seeing far more crowd support, at least from the home side. Hope counts on top of Cassette there. It's Odie. You know she's going to answer the call in moments like this. Tough little turnaround jumper level by Jordan Odie levels this game at 78. The fadeaway gives her 33. Madden to Brooke Honaker. Milliburn. Backing off, Peterson with the touch, now Madden again. Madden, tried to sling it to Hope Counts, and lost it. For leg. Who's going to come out on top? Will Maple Grove pick up another huge win? Will Providence serenade Madden Greenway with one of their own? Contact, elbow J, got it! I tell you what. Ava Cassette with 17. More than once tonight, we've seen Ava Cassette step up for Maple Grove. Madden. That's a walk. <laughs> Tried to stay on her pivot. Could and not. Now Kyra Gase is going to come with some full court pressure defense. We haven't seen too much of that out of Providence Academy. Still a two point game, though. Maple Grove. Look out. Drops the dagger. That could be a dagger, Mike. Claire Stern, I think, was shocked to find herself that open. I, and she, th she took a couple seconds to think about it, too, and said, why not? Maple Grove calling the timeout. They've got one left. Alex, I know QRF doesn't favor matchups like this. It doesn't uh, benefit 418, per se, but I think everyone would know you get a win against Providence Academy, you mean you, business. You, 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 you had to put in a full day's work. Claire Stern up to 15 points. She has 12 points in the second half. And Jordan Odie with 33. Now the game is not over. Providence still has some time here, but not much. Remember against Minnehaha, they trailed late in the first meeting, came out in the end. They trailed by 10 early in the second meeting before coming back to win it. So, do not ride off Providence. I know I said that three was a dagger, and it very well could be, but Providence Academy might have a little more magic well, left. I, th I think more importantly for Providence Academy, you don't want to get too greedy with a three-pointer just yet. You want to see if you can find some opportunities for the drive and dribble, see what we can do with the penetration. So you know who's going to bring it up the floor. The question is, who will answer the call? Madden Greenway draws the foul. Now Maple Grove had three to give. That's her fourth. That's the fourth on cassette. You're not going to take her out now though. Providence, they need a bucket. Honaker, long. Hope counts, collects. 
and then throws it away. Got a foul now. Alex, for the last several years, it seemed like Maple Grove could never win the big ones. You and I, we've been here for several of their meetings with late conference teams. They could handle the Northwest Suburban without much trouble. But against teams like Eden Prairie, Wyzetta, yeah. Hopkins and the like. Well, the door's still open. But Providence, they need to score here to have any chance. Peterson, that's a walk. Wow, Nicole. Wow. Well, Connor Gates has no choice here, but bring everything but the kitchen sink here on with pressure defense. And there's a steal right there. Players on the floor. This is turning into a mad dash. With 15 seconds, Providence, they got to get a bucket. They're running out of time. That'll do it. Maple Grove always seem to come up short against those statement teams. This year, they now will have wins over Wyzetta, Eden Prairie, and now Providence Academy. And you know you have to believe that this is going to be a huge shot of confidence in the arm for the Maple Grove Crimson when, these, when they get into these kinds of situations down the stretch. I did see Kennedy click in attendance for this one. She graduated from Maple Grove after starting with a couple of other schools. Became close friends with a lot of these players. Claire Stern, 14 second half points. Madden Greenway draws the foul, but it's academic. This game came down to the final couple minutes, Alex. Maple Grove made the big plays. Providence came up a little short. Well, and we saw that big three by Stern from the top of the key. That was really a dagger when you think about it. And this will add another twist in what has been a wild season. Minnetonka losing two in a row. The last of the undefeateds in 4A. No undefeateds in 3A or 2A. Anyone can win it, no matter the class. Madden Greenway makes both. Timeout with 2.4. Well, and, and again, it just shows you the quality of all the teams here in girls high school basketball in the state of Minnesota, Mike. Jordan Odie, season high 33, but I feel like Claire Stern, the other player of the game, 14 second half points, stepping up when Cassette and Holmquist weren't able to get it going. And Alex for Providence, this reminds me uh, of like the other games. They've dropped a few this year, but remember, they are retooling a bit. They don't have the glue player they used to with the Count Sisters. Right. Ari Peterson certainly getting there, so it's just amazing how we all thought there would be some heavy favorites to win it all. Yeah. And now, entering February, the last month of the regular season, I feel like you, you, anyone. You, 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 feel, you see a few chinks in the armor. This I, is, still, I still look at them as probably the odds on favor right. when, when you come the, right down to it. But you do see some chinks in the armor, perhaps. Well, there are three teams who I think can win it all in 2A, but how about Maple Grove? Yeah. Everyone I mean, was they, saying they the, have to be in the conversation. Everyone was saying the state champion would come from the lake. We'll find out next Friday with Maple Grove and Minnetonka. That game is going to have significance. Well, we saw Minnetonka look, just look like world beavers last Saturday night, and they came crashing back to earth in uh, somewhat frightening fashion. And Maple Grove, they nearly got a win against Hopkins on Saturday. Everyone's been singing praises about the lake, and you can understand that with the domination they put on in the last couple of years. But Maple Grove, I think they're going to be in that conversation now. 
for the first time in a long time. Well, I tell you what, regardless of the outcome here tonight, Mike, it's been a, been a, a real treat to cover this game, and uh, we, we watched the good one. It's an outcome that favors Maple Grove 86-80. Alex, another quality win for the Crimson. They yep. beat YZ in Eden Prairie. Now you have Providence Academy. Maple Grove, I think, is going to be a team to watch if they can make it to the 4A field. You know, again, as I, and as I pointed out, this win tonight, coming back from you know when things maybe weren't looking so hot for them and, and the face of some adversity here tonight, you know, they just found a way. They just stood firm and they found a way. And you have to think that this win is going to be a huge shot of confidence in the arm for him, Mike. We'll try to get a word with Maple Grove before we wrap it up. This is high school girls basketball. The Crimson beat the Lions 86-80. Joining me are Jordan Odie and Claire Stern. Jordan, season high, 33, just your second 30-point game this season. But over the last several years, you've been part of some talented Maple Grove teams. Up until this year, it never seemed like they could win the big one. Now you have wins over Wyzetta, Eden Prairie, and Providence Academy. What does it say about this team's ability to close out? Yeah, honestly, I think it's just the amount of time we spend together. Um, we all love each other, and everyone stepped up tonight, and I think that's why we got the dub. It was back and forth all game long. Neither team led by more than seven. It wasn't until the end where you came through in the clutch. Where did you find that last gear to get to the finish line? Um, I would just say, again, in my teammates. They give me so much confidence, and also Coach Cook gives me so much confidence to just go to the rim. If I get blocked, it's okay, but just even putting it up there and having that opportunity. Not only that, I don't know how big your crowds are at home, but... I'm guessing this is one of the bigger crowds you've seen all season, maybe the Hopkins game yeah. on Saturday. How do you feed into that? Because I saw a pretty good Maple Grove contingent. They were going at it with the Providence fans. Alex and I were saying this felt like a state tournament game. How did you feel? I love the crowd so much. I love when they heckle. I love when our crowds heckle. I think it's just a great atmosphere. And, of course, uh, you and Madden Greenway were going toe-to-toe -to -toe for a little while. She got her 3,000th point, but you got the win. What does it mean to you to engage in a battle like this where you give it your best effort, Providence gave it their best effort, and turn this into an instant classic? It was a lot of fun for us. I'm guessing it was fun for you uh, getting the win, too. It was. I mean, Madden's a great player, and we were talking out there. We love each other. Um, but it was great to just compete against each other. This is the first time Maple Grove even got to play Providence, so it was just a great experience. Are we going to see more matchups like this in the future? I hope so. And not just because you won, right? Yes, exactly. Well, hey, you know what? Now you got to get 44 next time. No, that really was a lot of fun. 33 is pretty good in its own right. And Claire, not quite a 30-point game for you, but you really stepped it up in the second half. 14 points, 17 overall. How did you pick things up to help out Jordan and the rest of this Maple Grove team? Yeah, I mean... Doing the little things always comes a long way. Um, Lexi, Hannah is another great person at doing that. And all the energy that everyone brought, our fans and our bench, that really helped feed into our atmosphere. So, Do you think any of those ladder ball games of yours helped you in that second half? Oh, definitely. Uh, they definitely helped my arm strength a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I'm guessing Jordan's been practicing her saxophone, oh. right? <laughs> Every single day. You know what? That probably helps your stamina. I think so, too. <laughs> So in the first half, it was a bunch of threes. You struggled a little bit in the second half, but then hit some more big ones and then just came up with big buckets. How confident were you feeling in terms of your perimeter game tonight for the two of you? Um, I would say very confident. Um, the way we move the ball as a team is super helpful it's for us creating our offense and also just our energy, the way we support each other is super helpful as well. I agree. I think when our shots aren't falling from the three, we are a really good, team, good, really good job of attacking the basket and getting those kickouts. Those are always easier from hit than like a pass up top. And I think we're also a good driving team, which helps kind of balance that out. So. And Claire, I'll ask you what I asked Jordan to 
Beyond the winning end of big games like this, something that has eluded the two of you for a while these last couple of years, how do you think that will inject confidence and perhaps carry over? I know you're not going to look ahead at sections, but accomplishing goals, objectives that haven't happened before in recent years, what do you think that could do for this Maple Grove team? I think it'd be, it could be huge for us. I mean, this team is different than any other team we've had before. We don't really have a big, so it's a lot of pushing the ball in transition, and I think that really helps us. And I think, yeah, with all the work we put in in practice, I think that's really going to help us in the future. So, Jordan, I have to ask you now, with a few wins like this, uh, do you have some sort of saxophone riff that you can play to serenade the team? I definitely could. I will. I'm going to invite them all to my concert. Um, upcoming, it's actually at NDSU. <laughs> so um, I think everyone should pop out. <laughs> and you say you're not a band nerd. I am not, actually. I am a jazz musician. <laughs> jazz musician. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. All kinds of jazz out there. I, too much time or too much time to explain it all to you. But you know yeah. what? Maybe before the Andover game, we'll have to do a little jazz session. <laughs> I'll have to bring you on the podcast and you can show it. Yes. Well, before we go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Um, I'll just say hi to my family and my friends. Thank you so much for coming. And then all of the OHH basketball little girls that came as well. Yeah, just hi to my family and all my friends. And thank you for all the support you guys give to Crimson Girls Basketball. Now, is it too late to get Claire to join your basketball training academy here? Or would that be too much to <laughs> Never. change initials? <laughs> Never too late. She's coming on as a special guest. <laughs> all right. Well, Jordan, I guess you've taken on Matt and Greenway. I'll leave you with this. Uh, are we going to see a matchup with that AAU backcourt mate of yours and Addie Mack? I hope so. I'm so excited when we play together. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by. Congrats on the win and enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jordan Odie and Claire Stern of Maple Grove. That wraps up our coverage here from Providence Academy. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.